start recording. Okay, hi, it's uh, Glenn MacArthur here, the creator and maintainer of AV Linux, and I just want to talk a little bit today about the next version of AV Linux, which is in super, super early, early, early development and is moving to MX Linux uh, as a base. And the reason for that is, well, there's many reasons, and that's a little bit of what I want to talk about. Uh, so let me get started with, I guess, the most obvious thing, because you, I just don't, can't assume everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, but let's talk about AV Linux, first of all. So uh, AV Linux is a ready-to-use, uh, Debian-based uh, Linux. I don't really like to call it a distribution. Let's just say it's a shared operating system it's my own operating system that I use for multimedia content creation. So multi-track audio recording, video editing, uh, graphic design, all of those things uh, I've been using and uh, Linux since about 2007. And I started to share it, my system, for other people to use because I thought it worked so great. I, I kind of wanted to spread the word. Uh, I didn't really want to become... Uh, a distro god or a distribution sort of thing at all. I just really wasn't wasn't what my idea was. Uh, it was just basically this. I've got this. This is working really well for me. There's some really great software here. Uh, everyone should really ex have be able to experience this. So I started sharing my system uh, in about 2008 or so. And um, it kind of has done pretty good, considering it's a niche little system. As I said, I had no great ambitions for it to become popular, but it uh, has kind of found a niche alongside uh, KX Studio, Ubuntu Studio, uh, some of the other uh, multimedia content creating sort of based uh, Linux distributions. Uh, I get compared quite often to KX Studio or Ubuntu Studio, which I don't know how I feel about that, really. There's, there's, I mean, on the surface, they're com comparable, but really there's not a whole lot under the hood that's, that's common. Anyways, um, I guess I'm digressing here. The point being, uh, AV Linux started out as uh, sharing my own system with people uh, as so they could you know, check out AV Linux and do and create multimedia content like I was. So uh, now I'm not a developer developer. I'm a facilitator. Uh, I put things together, existing things together, combine them, uh, configure them, get them to work well together. But I'm not a person that, you know, writes programs from scratch or anything like that. So for AV Linux, I've always needed to uh, rely on uh, third-party software to take my system, uh, create an ISO image file, and then uh, share it with other people by uploading it uh, to my web space. So for many years, I used a great, great program uh, called RemasterSys. Uh, actually, I came to know the uh, developer of RemasterSys quite well in an in a online acquaintance sort of way. Uh, and we worked together quite a bit on things. Uh, he also provided uh, AV Linux its first user forum. Uh, so uh, I got a, I have always have fond memories of Tony Brzezki, uh, who is still, of course, very much alive, but is no longer uh, developing RemasterSys. So I had to uh, uh, kind of leave RemasterSys and find something else to use. And what I found to use was uh, System Back which was never really intended for people to create and share an, uh, a distribution of Linux. It was a backup tool for you to take your system uh, and back it up, uh, make it a bootable, installable uh, ISO that if you ever, you know, borked your system or wrecked it, you could install it uh, with uh, system back and get back and running again. So I kind of took that envelope and I stretched it uh, to... Uh, as far as it could go, and I used it for many years uh, as a replacement for RemasterSys uh, to create ISO files to share AV Linux. 
However, unfortunately, all good things must end, and uh, System Back is the second uh, remastering uh, ISO creation tool to have fallen on hard times. Uh, the developer quit developing it. Uh, it's been forked by other developer. Uh, it works better, and it's been modernized a bit, but it still has a lot of difficulty with uh, some new UEFI-based booting systems, and it's very spotty to install on systems with uh, SSD NVMe uh, drives. So uh, for me, it's been actually a source of frustration. A lot of people who are interested in trying AV Linux who want to install it on a newer computer have been... Uh, unfortunately not able to do so very easily and uh, I have to admit you know that's that's been difficult and it hasn't really done a whole lot uh, for either the popularity or reputation of AV Linux uh, so it was time for me to find uh, some other way to get this done now uh, I had heard of that I was, my first Linux distribution I tried out when I was curious about Linux back in 2006 or so was uh, a little distribution, well, quite a large distribution, actually called Mepis. And uh, the Mepis community uh, had a great KDE-based distribution. Uh, it was uh, a vibrant community, very in hands-on, very involved. Uh, but unfortunately, as I said, all good things must end. Uh, Mepis kind of came to an end, and uh, from the ashes rose the phoenix of MX Linux. So much, many of the same community people that were around from the beginning uh, stayed around, and some new people came in, and uh, they uh, started developing uh, MX Linux, which if you know anything about using Linux in the Linux world, uh, you'll know that uh, on distrowatch.com, uh, which is sort of the... Uh, uh, the Billboard Top 100 of Linux distributions. Uh, well, let's just go over and have a look at distrowatch.com and see what they're saying about MX Linux. So if I go to distrowatch.com, bing, bang, boom, if we go down here a little bit, we see MX Linux is numero uno. So it is the top uh, Linux distribution on um, DistroWatch, and if we go down here a long, long way, we see that AV Linux is also in the top 100, but at a rather dismal number 71. Not that I keep track very often, that's the first time I've checked in a while, but I'm kind of amazed that I'm still even in there. But, uh, so, MX Linux is uh, the number one distribution, and I'll, I'm going to tell you why it's number one. It's not number one because it's the flashiest. It's not number one because it's anything sort of uh, temporary or flash in the pan about it. It's number one because it's basically grounded on a grassroots community, a lot of user, uh, uh, a lot of user input, uh, an amazing development team that has taken the core of Debian Linux and added so many great and complementary uh, tools. Uh, well, actually, let's just have a look here at their MX, uh, MX tools. Okay, these are all uh, kind of extra utilities that come uh, in MX Linux. And if you're the kind of person that's going to be doing a lot of... Uh, uh, if you are kind of new to Linux, you'll find that you know Debian Linux has all the major stuff covered for you, but there's just some little utilities that are missing, especially in... Uh, a, a kind of a less featureful desktop environment like XFCE4, which is what MX and AV Linux both use. Uh, so we see here that there are a whole host of MX tools. So we're talking about MX being number one. Uh, I, I would say one reason is uh, because they have a great community and because they have uh, have all these great tools uh, that make Linux even easier to use, especially for new users. But I would also have to say it's because it's just they employ common sense. It's not all about jumping for trends or any of that kind of stuff. It's about making the system work well, making it stable, helping it to work for as many people as possible, 
uh, all that kind of stuff. So I, I cannot say enough good about MX Linux. Uh, and I want to clarify that over the years, um, I've had a few people pop by who have used AV Linux, who are also MX Linux users, and they have said, you know, you really should start using MX Linux to, uh, you know, create your ISO files. You, they've got great tools for that, and, you know, you can just... And I'm like, ah, well, you know, I've got what I've got's working, so, and I'm used to it, and I know what it's going to do, so, you know, maybe not right now, anyway. Uh, so I kind of said, no, then another people were using, uh, with AV Linux, actually we have our own uh, kernel repository uh, that we have uh, our, for doing audio and video work, um, not for everyone, but in some cases, the best pr uh, potential for uh, high, fast, low latency performance is to use a Linux kernel with the real-time uh, patch and real-time preempt uh, applied to it. Now, so we, we have, uh, uh, AV Linux has its own kernels, and over time, uh, some MX Linux users were, uh, would c pop by and say, hey, we're not using AV Linux, but we do audio and video stuff, and we're using your AV Linux kernel in our MX Linux, and it's all working very well together. So that was always kind of cool to hear. So I've always uh, known of M MX Linux, but uh, didn't really understand the depth of, uh, you know, just how good it was. Uh, so I, I went through Remaster Sys. It, the, the developer stopped working on it. I went through System Back. The developer stopped working on it, uh, and now I'm running into problems with people not being able to properly install uh, AV Linux. So it came down to you know either let's just forget about doing this, just use your own Linux system for yourself, and stop trying to share it with other people, or you know maybe reach out for some help and uh, do something different. So uh, I have to say. Um, I was a little apprehensive because I didn't really want to show up, uh, install some packages, and start spitting out a different an MX Linux with some audio packages and video packages. Uh, I, if I was going to do this, I really wanted to, number one, I wanted to bring something of value to their community. And number two, I didn't real, I'd also don't want to... Uh, uh, AV Linux has been developed over a long period of time, and there are a lot of things. It's a very in-depth and focused distribution, and there are a lot of uh, system tweaks and stuff that people have come to expect, and I didn't really want to have to leave any of that stuff behind. So uh, this is part of the reason this video is, uh, we're talking about early, early development here, because I need to take... I need to get used to MX Linux. I need to see the in depth what their system is, figure out where things there are duplication of things, and then I also want to bring all of the stuff that makes AV Linux AV Linux into uh, this this hybrid and uh, make sure that it all works as expected. So that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. So that's why there's not really uh, a release yet. There may be an alpha release very soon, but it's going to take a long time to do this, to do justice to the kindness of the MX community and also do justice to uh, the existing reputation of AV Linux. And uh, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that so people understand what's going on here. Uh, so when I reached out to the MX Linux, uh, they have a great forum. So when I reached out to the folks uh, on their forum... Uh, about, uh, you know, here's me, here's what I do. Uh, I'd kind of like to use your system to do what I do. What do you guys think of that? Uh, they could have quite easily said, look, we're just fine doing what we do. Uh, we don't really need you, and we'd rather you just didn't come up, pop in and cherry pick all our good stuff and, you know, do your thing. So I didn't know what to expect. I couldn't have been welcomed with more open arms. Uh, a few people answered me right away and said, yeah, we know who you are. We know what you've been doing. Uh, we've tried it. We've used it. Uh, we're not using it now, some of them, but uh, 
uh, and we'd love to have you in our community. Uh, can we help you? And hopefully we can combine our, uh, you know, our knowledge and, and both projects will come out better. So I have to say I was extremely gratified uh, to receive such a warm welcome from uh, the folks at the uh, uh, MX Linux Forum. So uh, all of this to say and all of this to talk about why we're at where we're at right now, and essentially it's because uh, I need to move AV Linux to a better base. So uh, without any further ado about that, that's the backstory. Sorry to go on for so long, but I'm talking to people Long-time AV Linux users, I'm talking to people who may not even know what AV Linux is, but might be interested in trying Linux for multimedia production. And I'm also talking to MX Linux users who wonder, who's this clown that's posting on our forum all the time now? What's his deal? So that's what's going on. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, a system here up and running. Uh, uh, we've got our little dock here with our favorite audio and video programs. So I'd like to just kind of talk about a few things uh, that are uh, in the works and have already been done. Uh, number one thing I guess I'd like to talk about is I am doing this with our AV Linux kernel. Uh, so I'm using our AV Linux latest AV Linux real-time kernel, which is 5.6.17 uh, with RT patch 10 uh, at this point in time. Okay. And as always, the AV Linux kernels are not, they're not uh, compiled by me. They used to be, uh, but they are compiled by uh, Trulin Martin, who is a guy who was an AV Linux user who volunteered to give me a hand a few years ago and start doing the, uh, our, the kernels. So we set up a repository uh, for the kernels. And Trulin's been, when he has time, he's a really busy guy, young family. Uh, but when he has time, he has been uh, providing us with our real-time patched and also low-latency uh, kernels. So this is MX Linux as a base running the AV Linux kernel, and we're incorporating some of the normal AV Linux stuff. Now, something we'll want to have a look at here is the uh, typical AV Linux. Um, uh, we've got Jack, the Jack Audio Connection Kit. Uh, we have Pulse Audio, uh, Jack Audio Connection Kit, ELSA, all working together. Uh, so as you can see, we're running my, uh, we're running Jack right now. My uh, Studio Live AR8 is uh, is what's running in Jack, but we also have um, uh, Pulse Audio's uh, Jack Source and Sync. So we have Pulse Audio plumbed in and out coming in and out. So what's this mean? Well, why do I, would I care about that? Uh, you would care about that because you can be running your audio device with Jack and still do all your normal desktop stuff and Pulse Audio will seamlessly uh, pipe in and pipe out of Jack. So if you want to open your web browser and, you know, watch a YouTube video, uh, you can do that without anything complaining any of the audio apps complaining that they're using the sound card and you can't have it right now. Uh, also, you can uh, um, uh, you can um, run a music player. Uh, you can basically run anything on the on the system using sound, and it's all going to work together, and nothing's going to complain that the audio device is busy. Uh, and that is uh, set up by default. Uh, let me let me go here to the setup. Uh, in AV Linux, uh, we have a we make use of uh, Pulse Audio Jack Connect script. Uh, that that script is developed by Herman Meyer, who is of uh, the um, the developer of Guitarix, uh, which is a guitar amp simulation program that people play guitars through on Linux. So, um, oh, what did I do here? Oopsie, I closed my little window. Maybe people have had enough looking at me anyway, right? <laughs> Maybe not, though. What did I do? What did I do? I can't find myself. Oh, there it is. Okay, so um, so we make use of uh, the PA Jack Connect script. Uh, that 
uh, we start our we select our audio device so here as you can see uh, a lot of people think jack is very complicated but i don't know anyone who's been using a computer whether it's with with windows or or uh, os x or anything and you're doing you know multimedia work where you have maybe a different, an outside piece of sound hardware, where you don't have to at some point select that piece of hardware to be used by the operating system. And that's really all you need to do with Jack. I really don't understand. People are, you know, there's ranting and raving and the whales of the damned all over the internet about how difficult Jack is to use. And I remember when I was a Windows user and I was wanting to record and I was using outboard gear, I would have to use, you know, the ASIO. Uh, driver uh, setup uh, in Cubase to find the audio device I wanted to use. So that's all we're doing here. So we have selected uh, my, I have a, a, a Presonus Studio Live AR8 uh, mixer and it's selected here uh, and this is what Jack is using and running through. So all of this to say um, it doesn't need to really be difficult uh, to use uh, Jack Audio Connection Kit in AV Linux. There's no extra third-party tools. I mean, I know KX Studio has their own tools, Cadence and all that kind of stuff. Those are great, and they work great, but we're doing pretty much the same thing here, uh, simply using the tools that have always been associated with uh, using Jack. Uh, Rui uh, Nuno Capela's uh, Jack Audio Connection Kit QJack Control uh, is the name of the program, uh, or QJack CTL, I guess. Um, anyway, that's been around forever since I started using Linux. So, with AV Linux, we're just we have a you start your system, you select the sound card you want to use, and then all your audio. I don't care if it's Elsa or Pulse Audio, and all your MIDI, whether it's Jack MIDI or Elsa MIDI, are all automatically routed for you. So, uh, that is one kind of difference. Uh, but from AV Linux uh, to MX Linux. MX Linux isn't really set up with Jack at all. It's available and it can be used. You can install it, but if you don't know how to configure it, I just want to point out that's one thing uh, that's all set up, ready to use, and AV Linux always has been and will continue to be in the MX edition. Now, while we're talking about uh, hybrid stuff here, um, I'm, I've done some work on the AV Linux, uh, assistant. Uh, it's called now called the AVL MXE assistant. Now, you know, this is, this is nowhere near the, uh, you know, finish fit and finish of the MX tools, but it's a control panel to just do some common tasks and make things easier for beginners that you may not do. So, uh, here we have, uh, I've, I've, I've put the uh, CPU governor. If we're doing audio and video work in Linux, you want to be using the performance governor on your CPU. Uh, so NAV Linux is actually set up by default to use the, uh, the governor, the performance governor, pardon me. Uh, so I've added that functionality to the control panel. Uh, you can go in and you can set... Uh, um, What did I, I guess I didn't close it, did I? Well, aren't you a silly boy? Okay, sorry, I needed to close that. Um, now, you can use, uh, if, um, it's, this is just a shortcut to the XFCE for uh, startup utility because for audio and video stuff, you may not want to have every possible daemon running and every possible application auto-starting and running. So this is just basically a shortcut uh, to get in there and, uh, you know, uh, get rid of any programs, auto running, auto starting, uh, that you may not want to have. Uh, okay. We're going to close that. Um, uh, this is just simply, uh, if you've got a hung or a stuck program and you don't really know what to do about it and you don't want to, you can't control all delete or whatever. Uh, this is just basically a little shortcut to use X kill which you just hover over whatever program isn't working and click, oh, and then I just killed the program I was using. So that's what that's for. Um, restart Pulse Audio, that's really hardly ever needed, but sometimes the Pulse Audio Jack uh, source and sync clients 
can be a little sticky, especially maybe on a fir- the first run. So this kind of just cycles Pulse Audio on and starts it up again, and hopefully we'll get the get the uh, sync and source uh, clients running if they aren't already. Uh, this is simply a one button. If you, I'm not going to use it right now. I can't uh, because I'm using Jack. But sometimes, uh, if you've uh, if you haven't started Jack to use on your system, but you have a Jack based program. Sometimes they will take the liberty of starting Jack or even starting Jack Dbus uh, on your system as a daemon in the background, um, and you may not be aware they're running. And when you try and start another Jack op- application, you may find that the uh, sample rate setting isn't what you had originally set, and things are acting weird. This is a one-button fix to get rid of that. Uh, we also have a built-in RT performance diagnostic. So this basically checks the system and tells you uh, that all of the um, uh, tweaks that are necessary for the best latency, lowest latency performance are done. I'm not going to run it right now, and I'll tell you why. Uh, The system I have right now uh, has 24 cores, and it lists them all separately, and it actually makes the... It's just a Perl-based application, and it actually makes it... Uh, spew out all over the screen and it's very hard for me to just grab it and get it closed quickly but uh, this basically confirms to you that all of the common uh, performance tweaks on a Linux audio system are already done and ready for you on AV Linux so that's just kind of some uh, um, miscellaneous stuff now uh, AV Linux always has come or recently I should say comes with uh, it's hard to explain this because people are so used to running a system and just update, update, update. Oh, my God, updates. I have updates. I have updates. I have to update. Uh, my personal feeling is if you're using a purpose kind of driven system to do something, like let's say let's say I'm recording an album uh, with the audio recording software, and I don't really want to expose my system to a blanket update uh, of the software, uh, then, but I also still want the security of the latest web browser, uh, then perhaps I don't want to um, uh, do a blanket upgrade. Maybe I just want to update the browser. So this is just a little quick little utility, and all it does is it just updates Mozilla Firefox. So uh, I have to uh, give it root permissions to do that. Uh, So it just opens a terminal, and it's going to uh, update the package list. Uh, So it's got the latest package info, uh, so that you're, you know, basically your apt get update. Uh, Then it's going to see if there is uh, an update for Firefox. Now, if we see here, Firefox is already the newest version, so we're good. So we're so our system, you know, we're not undermining anything by doing a risky blanket update when we're actually in the middle of working on something, but we're also don't have a stale web browser with security issues. So the quick update, that's what it's for. AV Linux, of course, you can use as an, a, a desktop Linux system, just like any other. And if you're giddy about being aware of all updates as soon as the minute they happen, you can obviously still do that. But my personal, I'm a little more conservative in that way, not in many ways. I'm a little more conservative uh, to my approach in that I want the system to kind of just be, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't touch it. Uh, But just give me the latest security browser. So uh, that's what that's for. Now, Another thing we have here is AV Linux has uh, a lot of third-party uh, Debian repositories. Uh, one of them is uh, for the Liquorix uh, kernels. That's actually an optional kernel for people that may want to try them. Uh, we have Spotify, the audio uh, streaming application. Uh, we have uh, Wine Staging, which is a special version of the Windows emulator Wine. Uh, we have those uh, repositories right from Wine HQ. Um, we have uh, F-Audio, which is actually uh, was a dependency of Wine, and also AV Linux ships with the community 
edition of Docker. So those are all third-party repositories, and sometimes their security keys get updated, and you will uh, you know, run your typical uh, Synaptic Package Manager uh, update, and it will uh, tell you that the GPG key has expired. So these are all just one-clicks uh, to update your... So let's just try it. Let's, uh, let's update our Licorix uh, kernel key. And so we're going to see it simply is just going to go uh, to the Licorix site and it's going to update the, the, the latest GPG key. Now, MX has a tool for this and I'm not exactly, I haven't used much, I haven't used it a whole lot yet, so I don't know exactly where these overlap, but this is just something that AV Linux users are used to and it's just a quick one button. I, I, want, I want, to, uh, want a quick update, but I want a specific thing updated and I don't want to, uh, mess with the whole system. That's the that's the uh, kind of uh, rationale behind that. Now we have a new tab here on the assistant because AV Linux makes use of Wine, and we make use of Wine uh, to run primarily uh, because there are a wealth of uh, VST of uh, Windows VST audio plugins, and most of them run quite well uh, in Linux using Wine. So that's done in a various, uh, uh, with a various set of tools. We're using uh, Wine Staging. Uh, we're also using an independent project called uh, Lin VST, which was uh, uh, a, a guy uh, who has done... Uh, oh, we're getting into more depth here than I wanted for this video. Basically, Lin VST takes Windows VST audio plugins and makes them appear as Linux audio plugins. So your host, like Ardor or Qtractor or Harrison Mixbus, whatever you may be using, Reaper, et cetera, et cetera, can see uh, you can run a Linux native version of your host, but the Windows plugins will appear as Linux native plugins and can be used that way. So LinVST has uh, some, uh, su some setups that it requires. So we've kind of got a quick button that lets you access that. Uh, otherwise, that's nothing that really comes in LinVST as an obvious kind of menu item. So if you don't know how to use it, you basically have to type these commands in the terminal. So I've just kind of made some easy buttons in order to do it. Uh, and this also covers uh, whether you have your Windows VSTs uh, excuse me, in your home folder or whether you have them outside of your home folder in a system folder so you can run LinVST uh, setup utility as, as your regular user or you can run it as root. Uh, now, and we also have uh, Wine ASIO. Uh, that is uh, also a, uh, a Windows. Windows has a, a, a ASIO sort of, uh, I guess, um, it's not a format, uh, but for as an audio standard, I guess, an audio driver standard. Uh, Windows uses ASIO. Uh, so if we're wanting to use a Windows application that requires an ASIO driver, but we're using Linux and Jack, this is where Wine ASIO comes in and it makes your Wine ASIO uh, Windows application accessible and connectable to the uh, Jack audio connection kit. So uh, I've also incorporated uh, kind of just two, two click on buttons. Uh, now I've got an updated version of Wine, so it's going to actually do that. So let's just cancel that for now. Um, uh, so it needs to get that out of the way only because it was a first run here. So uh, it basically starts the DLL, the Wine ASIO DLL. So that's just basically a quick and dirty uh, way to get that up and running, which also is not an obvious kind of launcher menu item on a system. So we kind of, you know, it's all about making things more convenient so people uh, who aren't so used to using a terminal or aren't so used to, uh, you know, just typing things in uh, can just click a button and have it work as they would expect on any other operating system. Uh, so that is kind of a new tab in the AVL MXE Assistant. And then we have here um, a sys editor. Now, basically, this is just a quick and dirty way. If you are administrating your Linux audio system or your Linux, sorry, your Linux desktop system, 
sometimes you need to get into the configuration files that are hidden in the system folders of the system. Uh, so this is basically just making that easy for you to do. So once again, we have to type in the uh, password, root password. And this is basically going to open uh, the package. Uh, so this, the, the sources.list file is basically uh, where the additional repositories that AV Linux is using are located in an organized, easy to read fashion. And if you need to make a change to that, if you want to disable one of them or, or, or update the information, then you can certainly just go click on the sys editor part of the uh, AVL MXE assistant. And instead of having to find that deep hidden system file to configure, you just click on it and it's easy. To, it's right there. You do what you need to do and you save it and close it. Um, so some of the common things people might want to change are their grub settings. Actually, I'm not going to open them all. Uh, perhaps you want your just global keyboard settings to be set. Uh, your CPU governor, as I said, AV Linux is set to performance by default, but you may want to set it to something else. You may want it to set it to uh, something a little less uh, hard on your uh, battery life uh, on a laptop. And then call on the performance governor with the other utility here instead of uh, having it be uh, performance by default. That's up to you. I think uh, it should be uh, performance by default because this is designed to be an audio and video working system, not just a general desktop. Uh, also, things uh, you can, um, there's uh, other scripts and stuff that, you know, you have to be a pretty experienced Linux user and pretty, you know, knowledgeable about poking around in the config files of the system to use this. I'm not saying a lot, many people won't even touch this, but for those people that are tweakers and hackers and, uh, you know, uh, very experienced with their system, they're probably going to want to use this to make things, uh, shortcuts to make things easier. So uh, this has gone on for quite a long time already. Uh, so uh, in summary, I guess I just want to talk about very quickly, I'm not going to launch all the programs and do an in-depth demo. We, we'd be here all day and I don't have, uh, there's not a lot of stuff here set up ready to go, but let's just go through the multimedia menu very quickly because this is what AV Linux is about. It's a multimedia distribution. Uh, so uh, you have Ardor, the digital audio workstation. We will be shipping with whatever the latest version is. Uh, when AV Linux uh, MX Edition is released, it will be the most recent version of Ardor and it will be the Ardor bundle uh, from the Ardor website. It's not going to be some sort of package. Uh, Ardor's developers only support their own bundled software uh, that they, they've specially prepared. So we're not going to have a you know third-party package of Ardor. It's going to be their official. So you can go to the Ardor forum, ask for help, and you will know that you have a, a supported version of Ardor uh, to get help with if you need it. Uh, we could Asunder CD Ripper, Audacity, of course, for uh, you know your basic sound file editor. Uh, something that doesn't come in very many uh, distributions that comes in AV Linux is AVI Demux, which is a great uh, for making video cuts, uh, lossless video cutting. It's great for that kind of stuff. Uh, quick conversions from one video format to another, that sort of thing. Uh, we have the CAF plugin pack for Jack, which is a set of audio plugins. It comes with a Jack host. I don't really know why I don't ever use it. Uh, I use the plugins uh, within. Ardor or Harrison Mixbus. Uh, I never use them on their own with this Jack host, but it, it, they come that way. Uh, we have Sin Sinalera, uh, Sinalera GG, which is the uh, newest, most uh, actively developed fork of the Sinalera video editor. Sinalera is a great video editor. It's probably the longest uh, lived video editor in Linux, and it's probably the most hated and the most uh, most loved all at the same time. Uh, it has a lot of bad uh, uh, history as far as uh, s different forks and different developers and people shitting on each other's projects, but we have, uh, in AV Linux, we use Sinalera, the latest fork, the most actively developed fork, um, and it is I can't even begin to tell you how vastly improved Sinalera GG is uh, versus, versus its uh, 
uh, it, its previous uh, versions and other forks. Uh, Fado mixer, that is for FireWire devices, but I don't even know if that's worth uh, having in anymore because uh, most of them are, this is for the old uh, FireWire drivers, Fado FireWire drivers. It's not for uh, using them with ELSA, new ELSA drivers. Uh, Gion Kick is for making, uh, basically making uh, uh, um, electronic drum sets for uh, electronic EDM type of music. Uh, we have Guitarix, as I mentioned, which is a, uh, a guitar uh, uh, amplifier uh, um, application. You plug your guitar in, and Guitarix emulates uh, basically all of the, the greatest uh, circuitry of uh, the most common uh, guitar amplifiers and you can uh, process the sound right through your computer. You don't have to have an amp. You just plug into your computer and Guitarix looks after things. Uh, GUVC view for webcam stuff. Helm, uh, a, s a great synthesizer, uh, very, very actively developed and very fully and completely uh, uh, feature, uh, a full and complete feature set, pardon me, uh, with it. Uh, hydrogen, a drum machine. We'll have the latest version of Hydrogen. They just released uh, Hydrogen 1.0. 1.0, uh, which is kind of a, a, a kind of a plateau uh, release. They ported it to Q5, did, uh, QT5, did a lot of other things to it, uh, improvements. Uh, a great uh, drum sequencer, absolutely. Jack mixer, as you can see, I'm using Jack mixer here. It's just basically uh, I'm, I can use it to uh, for input levels uh, using Jack, uh, that kind of stuff. Media info. Uh, M um, AV Linux comes with MPV, not VLC. I'm not a huge fan of VLC. I think it's very big and bloaty, uh, just to play media files. So I don't, I don't ship it. I, I come, it comes with. I ship uh, MPV. I'm sorry, my, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, so all of uh, video is a, all of is a new uh, open source video editor. It's still alpha, but it's very simple, very stable, and. Very pretty lightweight for a video editor. Uh, I think it's showing a lot of promise. I don't know. I'm kind of messing with it right now. I like. Uh, I've always liked um, to have. Uh, I've always liked to have. Uh, sorry, I lost my webcam. I don't know where it went. Do I care really? I don't really care that much. Um, it closed for some reason. I guess. Uh, so where were we? Back to the menu again. Um, so uh, Olive, yeah. Olive, uh, I don't know if it'll be in the actual release, but I'm just kind of looking at it, taking a good look at it right now. Polyphone also is an external application. It's not, it's not in uh, um, the Debian re repositories. Uh, neither, uh, neither are some of these other things here, actually. But uh, Polyphone is a sound font editor. Also, you can edit and create sound fonts or SFC uh, sound libraries. Uh, so that's something. Uh, Pulse Audio. Uh, these are uh, mixer controls for Elsa Mixer, uh, the QAS. Um, they can support your uh, hardware, maybe give you a little better uh, idea of your... Uh, well, let's open this H L HCL one. So this is my um, uh, capture channel map for uh, what I'm using here right now uh, for my PreSonus Studio Live. Uh, sometimes these sorts of things are not quite so uh, well laid out in a, the basic terminal version of Elsa Mixer. So I'm trying this out as maybe a little better, uh, especially for external USB audio devices, as a little better kind of um, uh, graphical mixing uh, utility. Um, so that's that. Uh, so we have QJack CTL. I call it QJack Control. I maybe that's not what it's called, but that seems to be what it does. So that's what I call it. Uh, that's what we're using to basically be our graphical thing to get Jack set up and working. Set Be Free is a great Hammond organ uh, emulation. Uh, simple screen recorder. We're doing our screencast with. Uh, Satala is a fairly new drum sampler. You can take your own samples and drop it in it. Uh, use it to make a. Uh, drum sounds, uh, you know, probably you could make any sort of music with it, but probably more geared towards EDM, that sort of thing. Uh, Spotify, of course, the Spotify client for Linux to play, use, stream Spotify content. Um, uh, Yoshimi, uh, another uh, uh, synthesizer, uh, basically based on Zinad sub effects, which, as you can see underneath, 
Yoshimi and Zen add sub effects. Linux are kind of sort of, I don't know. There's a little bit of competition going on. They're kind of they're they're based on the same basic synthesizer, adding features and stuff. I'm not a synthesizer guy. I'm not a developer on either team. I provide them both because people seem to like both. Uh, I don't have a dog in this fight, so I don't know which one is a good one and which one isn't a good one. Okay, so that is the on a, uh, multimedia stuff. Now, uh, as you can see, uh, just quickly, another huge difference uh, AV Linux has versus uh, other um, uh, distributions, either a regular vanilla desktop, uh, desktop distribution or uh, things like Ubuntu Studio and KX Studio don't have nearly the specialized uh, file manager uh, custom actions uh, built in like AV Linux does. So we, we have administrator-friendly stuff. Uh, open a terminal here, open a root terminal here, open the current folder as root, all that kind of, all those goodies. Uh, we have utility here to find large files and folders. Uh, we have two utilities here. If you have your own uh, audio samples and want to create a sound library for Hydrogen, the Hydrogen drum machine, uh, we have a utility built right into the Thunar file manager that can help you do that. And we also have uh, SFZ sound library. Um, uh, which is also, uh, it's kind of an open source, open f format, similar to SoundFont. Uh, anyways, we have a utility to do that. You can even actually uh, do sample editing with your audio files to a small degree, to, I would say, a you know, crude but effective way uh, with the uh, so SOX, Sound Exchange SOX uh, utility. Uh, we have ways of just using it right in the file manager. So you don't need to open Audacity or some wave file editor to trim your samples. You just can simply right click in the file manager and do it. Uh, what else do we have? We have some things if you have uh, a series of videos that you've encoded and you don't want to lay them all out in a video editor and re-encode them all to, to uh, uh, con concatenate or, or put them together sequentially, uh, we can do that losslessly right out of Thunar with a right click. Uh, your typical Samba kind of stuff, set up uh, folders in Samba. Uh, that sort of thing. There are more things, uh, but I think I'll, maybe we'll do another screencast that gets into that stuff in a more detailed uh, sort of way in the future. So, um, yeah. So, uh, basically, there you have it. Uh, a look at uh, early, early, early development. AV Linux MX Edition some of the rationale to why this is happening and some of the uh, changes you may see versus uh, just a vanilla uh, install of MX Linux. And hopefully combining the best of both worlds. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for listening. And if you've been interested, I hope uh, that answers any questions you might have. And if you haven't been interested, I hope by now you've gone and watched something else that is of more interest to you. Uh, so we'll talk to you soon. Going to have some more information, some more in-depth looks at some of these programs and stuff in the near future. But for now, that's it. So Glenn MacArthur from AV Linux. See you later. Take care. Bye.